Welcome to my homestead kitchen. Today we are gonna be making one of my very favorite products called Tallow Balm. It's the only thing that I ever use on my body and my face and it is so nourishing. It is loaded with antioxidants to help reduce wrinkles and all of that good stuff. You don't have to go buy fancy imported oils and creams. Instead, we can just use locally sourced beef tallow to nourish our skin. And the thing that I love about making my own Tallow Balm is it saves so much money. If you buy a little tub of tallow balm about two ounces is close to forty dollars where for me i can just go and buy three pounds of raw beef fat for nine dollars and i can make a lot of tallow balm out of that so it's a great way to save money support your local farmers and it's really easy to make you're gonna love it let's dive in First, let's talk ingredients. There's really only two required ingredients. It's tallow and then a little bit of olive oil. So it's super simple, but we can of course jazz it up a little bit by adding essential oils. And I'm actually gonna infuse some dried calendula blooms as well for some extra nourishing properties. But really only two are absolutely necessary, which is great. And you probably already have olive oil on hand. So it's just the tallow that you need to tackle. So there's a few options when it comes to tallow. If you can find tallow from a local farm, ideally grass-fed and grass-finished, awesome. But often what I found from CSAs is that they only offer raw fat. So raw beef fat is called suet. So if this is the only option available to you, don't worry. You can render this down to make tallow super easy. And I actually already have a YouTube tutorial showing how to do it. I'll make sure to link it below so you can see how easy it is. And honestly, it saves you money in the long run if you're willing to go the raw form and then render it down yourself. A last important note to make about tallow is the quality really, really does matter. Toxins are stored in the fat, both in animals and ourselves. So if you're rendering down fat from a feedlot cow, it's probably not something you wanna be absorbing into your system. So I recommend reaching out to a local farm or CSA where they're doing it right. They're raising the cows out on pasture until the very end. And then the other benefit of grass finished cows is there's gonna be a whole lot more nutrients, antioxidants, vitamin D, all that good stuff that's gonna benefit your skin. All right, let's get started. So here's a closer look at the ingredients that I'm gonna be using for today's tallow balm. We have our deer tallow here. This is my extra virgin olive oil. I like to get my olive oil in bulk from Azure Standard. It's a wonderful, wonderful service where you can get bulk organic goods delivered to you, especially if you live in a remote area like me. It is such a blessing. So I'll make sure to link that below. And then these are my calendula blooms that I dried this summer. I'm gonna be infusing it in the oil and the tallow Hallow for some extra medicinal properties. It's just very healing and soothing and nourishing. And then lastly, we have the essential oils, which are completely optional. You don't have to add them if you want to leave the tallow balm unscented. But what I like to add is lavender, cedar wood, frankincense, patchouli, and possibly geranium. Geranium can be a little bit strong, which might be nice with the deer tallow, which is stronger than beef tallow. So I'm gonna leave that on to the end and decide if I need to add that. As far as ratios go for the recipe, we're gonna do half a cup of tallow, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and 10 drops of our essential oils. And how we're gonna start is by melting this down. So the best way to melt a tallow, because it is very hard right now, is to use a double boiler. So it just consists of a little pot like this nestled inside a pot of water. So I have about an inch in there. And what's gonna happen is that steaming water is going to hit our little bowl and just gently heat and melt the tallow especially since I'm personally gonna be adding my calendula blooms. Again, you don't have to do this step, but it's a nice added benefit. So doing the gentle heating is really gonna make sure that our ingredients don't scorch. We don't wanna lose the medicinal qualities. We just low and slow, gentle is best. So we're gonna be using half a cup of tallow. Now, the way it is, it's very rock hard. It's gonna be hard to measure. So what I'm gonna do is just chip it away and eyeball it. Once it's melted, then we'll measure it out.
So let's go ahead and measure out how much we have. I'm hoping that we have a cup in here. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. And I love this double boiler because it has a nice lip on it. So it makes for easy pouring. Oh, we might just make it barely. We still need a little bit more to make it to a full cup since I decided at the last minute to do a double batch. So now it's easy to add solid chunks to get it to exactly one cup and then we'll melt that last little bit. Excellent, that's looking pretty good. We'll get it back in the double boiler. Now that everything is largely melted, I'm gonna add my calendula blossoms. If you don't have any herbs that you wanna infuse in the tallow, that is fine. You can skip this part. So once the tallow is fully melted, you can just stop the heat and skip on to the next part. But I do wanna infuse some of my calendula blooms. So I'm gonna pour some in and just let it gently heat for an hour. Right. It has been about an hour and a half. Our tallow is nice and infused with the calendula blooms. Again, if you don't want to infuse it, that is okay. But if you did, we need to strain this out. So I'm just going to move this over here. I have a strainer over a glass bowl and we're just going to add it in. I'm just going to use my spatula to get all the last little bit out of here. That'll make cleanup easier later too because tallow hardens really, really hard and so it can be challenging to clean it up later. So actually what I'm going to do is just take a little towel and wipe it out and then it'll be easy to clean up later. I also like to use the spatula to press out any last remaining oils or medicinal properties as well from the calendula. I'd say that's pretty good. So now it's time to add our olive oil. Since I decided to do a double batch with a cup of tallow, I'm adding a quarter cup of our extra virgin olive oil. If you're doing the original recipe of half a cup of tallow, just do two tablespoons of olive oil. This olive oil is essential because it's just gonna give it a little bit more lightness to it. Otherwise it can be pretty rich and hard. So that is in, and then we're also gonna add our essential oils. So 10 drops for the original recipe, I'm gonna go for 20. So I just like to evenly distribute it between the different oils that I'm adding. So I'll probably do one, two, three, four, five of the lavender. I'll do five of the cedar wood. We'll do five of the frankincense and then five of the patchouli. We'll give it a little stir again. You can see it's starting to harden a little bit on the edges already. I'll try and bring it down to join the rest. Now this is your chance while it's still liquid to kind of do a little sniff test and look for your balance of the essential oils that you've added. Now I will say it's going to smell a little strong, like beefy, or in my case, it's going to smell a little bit like deer, especially when it's warm. So don't freak out yet. Don't worry. The, that kind of strong pungent smell will go down as it cools. So something you can do just to be sure is just take a little bit on your finger, finger let it cool and go ahead and just rub that into your skin and it's going to feel really good. I can't wait for this batch. And then once it's kind of cool and incorporated, and give it a smell and see what you think. If, if you need to add a few drops of one or another to get a good blend, or if you wanna double the essential oils to kind of cover up some of that smell a little bit, feel free to do that. And then our next steps is probably the hardest part. It's the hardest one to get just right is we're gonna let this tallow completely cool down, but not too far either. So we want it to just firm up to where we can whip it up into a lovely fluffy texture. But if it cools down too much, it can get hard and chunky, and then it's hard to get it to whip properly. So we're gonna keep an eye on this and I'll loop you guys in when it's ready. Okay, my friends, it has been about 45 minutes and this is looking pretty good. So it has hardened slightly, but not completely. It's still a little bit soft. So I'm gonna get my mixer out and see what happens. So 
so it's looking really nice and soft and creamy, but I'm gonna keep going to incorporate a bit more air to lighten it up a bit. So you can see it's looking really nice and fluffy. It's lightening up in color as well as I'm working in more air. This is looking so good, very luxurious and soft. It definitely has that whipped texture. I think we're there. And I love to store my towel balm just in an empty mason jar. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop that in. Almost want to lick this spoon it looks delicious completely edible that's for sure and look how awesome this is we're able to fill a whole jar and a little bit really goes a long way so this is going to last me probably most of the winter that's for sure and that is it it is seriously that simple you just melt it down and whip it up and now you have a really wonderful nourishing product to put on your skin and opt out of the toxin loaded imported fancy oils that you don't really need anyways just a little bit of tallow some olive oil maybe some essential oils and your skin will thank you i've heard so many success stories of people switching over to tallow and their eczema goes away their skin tone improves and not to mention the cost savings if you remember i can get three pounds of raw beef fat for nine dollars so that is going to make a whole lot of tallow balm and these make great gifts as well well thanks so much for being here and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can learn more self-sufficiency skills along the way